Good morning and welcome to the workshop. In this video, I'm going to get to further on machining the drag and buffer beams for the Atlantic's tender. Now, if you've watched my previous video, uh, you'll notice I had some mistakes. I think I've managed to sort those out. Um, I wanted to give fly cutting another shot because the first time round, I don't think I really gave it a fair chance. And I've been really pleased this time. I used it to square up the outside faces of the angle um, in this buffer beam. The finish, I thought, was actually quite nice. Uh, you can see some striations there, but they're basically undetectable um, by a thumbnail, so they must be sub foul thickness. I'm just drilling some holes here. That's my spotting drill I'm using for the first time in quite a while. Uh, and then I'm switching out to a number one to tap quarter by 40 in the buffer beam holes and 532nd in the middle. I'm now tapping quarter by 40, and here just filing out that center hole to be square. Made a bit of a mistake trying to polish it up on some emery cloth because it's added a few marks to the surface which are showing up because they're uh, slightly darkened by the iron powder on the on the cloth but here we go uh, i'm quite pleased with this it's there's, there's that square hole there for the uh, hook and the threaded holes for the buffers uh, and the slots on top which seem to be accurate so yeah i'm pretty chuffed and what feels like several thousand hours later we have this one uh, and this is with the square hole for the uh, connecting pin and um, link between the tender and the locomotive. That was just drilled out to 530 seconds and then filed open uh, with some needle files to the correct dimensions there. which should be 3 16 by 3 8 hopefully. Um, and that is a hole for the pin to retain the link with the locomotive. Um, it will require another piece of material fixed here to receive the um, the other end. And I'm not entirely sure how to do that. I don't know where I need to braise it or rivet it. The instructions are a little ambiguous. Um, but that's that machined up. Here's the buffer beam and the drag beam in place with the side frames for the uh, tender chassis. And the, the somewhat critical dimension, although it's not 100%, is this across the inside faces of these frames. And it should be three and a quarter inches. Now I make that three and a quarter inches. So I'm pretty pleased with that. And this is the other side. We have three and a quarter between the frames, which is exactly what we're after. So I'm super pleased with that too. That's about as far as I can take these items. The next stage of construction on them requires either riveting or silver soldering. And I really need, I need to learn how to rivet. I need to practice silver soldering before I try and apply it to these otherwise completed parts. So what I probably will do is film that as a workshop short and maybe some of my key takeaways as I'm learning, um, but probably not as part of the construction series. And we'll jump back uh, when I'm ready to do it on here. So these might be parked for a little while. Some other interesting news for the channel, if you're sticking around a little bit longer to hear about it, is, uh, you know, when I, I bought my reciprocating um, mechanical hacksaw and I said, I make workshops complete. I don't need to buy anything anymore. I'm finished. And then you all laughed at me. And then I laughed. And, and then we all laughed together. And then I went and bought a pillar drill. Uh, so I have a pillar drill behind the camera that I need to refurbish. It needs some new bearings in the spindle. So based on my experience with a mill, that should be quite straightforward, hopefully. Um, and I've also managed to settle on a design for a five inch gauge locomotive that I really do want to build. Um, uh, the design is called Royal Engineer by a chap called Martin Evans, who's fairly well regarded. And he has uh, designed this five inch gauge locomotive, which just looks fantastic. It's brutish and huge and massive and was the most powerful locomotive of its time, as they, I guess as they all are, um, and just looks Amazing. 